Austria under National Socialism describes the period of Austrian history from March 12, 1938 when Austria was annexed by Nazi Germany the event is commonly known as Anschluss until the end of World War II in 1945. Early history The origins of National Socialism in Austria have been disputed and continues to be debated. Professor Andrew Gladding Whiteside regarded the emergence of an Austrian variant of National Socialism as the product of the German Czech conflict of the multi ethnic Austrian Empire and rejected the view that it was a precursor of German Nazism. In 1918, at the end of World War I, with the breakup of the multi ethnic Austro Hungarian Empire, and with the abolition of the Habsburg monarchy, there were three major political groups competing with one another in the Young Republic of Austria the Social Democratic Party of Austria. SDAP, Christian Social Party CS, and the nationalist Great German Union which became the Greater German People's Party in 1920. At the time, smaller parties such as the Communist Party of Austria or PO and the Austrian National Socialists Deutsche Nationalsozialistische Arbeiterpartei, or DNSAP were neither present in the Reichsrat Imperial Council nor the Nationalrat National Council. SDAP, GVP, and DNSAP were clearly, although for different reasons, in favor a union of German Austria with the German state, which was also a republic by that time Weimar Republic. The CS also tended to favor the union, but differed at first on a different subject, they were split on the idea of continuing the monarchy instead of a republic. Whereas only the PO decidedly spoke against the annexation in the course of the 1920s and 1930s, the monarchists originally spoke up against the annexation and later turned to favor it, after the Bavarian Soviet Republic had failed, and Germany had a conservative government. The Treaty of Saint Germain, signed September 10, 1919 by Karl Renner, SDAP, first Chancellor of the Republic, clearly forbade any union with Germany, abolished the monarchy, and clearly stated the first Austrian Republic as an independent country. Topic: <laughs> First Austrian Republic. The First Austrian Republic angered many Austrian Pan-Germans who made the claim that the Republic violated the 14 points that were announced by United States President Woodrow Wilson during peace talks, specifically the right to self-determination. Of all nations, life and politics in the early years were marked by serious economic problems the loss of industrial areas and natural resources in the now independent Czechoslovakia, hyperinflation and a constantly increasing tension between the different political groups. From 1918 to 1920 the government was led by the Social Democratic Party and later by the Christian Social Party in coalition with the German nationalists. On May 31, 1922, Prelate Ignaz Seipel became Chancellor of the Christian Social Government. He succeeded in improving the economic situation with the financial help of the League of Nations monetary reform. Ideologically, Seipel was clearly anti-communist and did everything in his power to reduce, as far as possible, the influence of the Social Democrats. Both sides saw this as a conflict between two social classes. The military of Austria was restricted to 30,000 men by the Allies and the police force was poorly equipped. Already by 1918 the first home guards were established like the Kartner Abwehrkampf. In 1920 in Tyrol the first Heimwehr was put in duty under the command of Richard Stiedel with the help of the Bavarian organization Escherich. Soon other states followed. In 1923 members of the monarchist, Ostara, shot a worker dead and the Social Democrats founded their own protective organization. Other paramilitary groups were the formed from former active soldiers and members of the Roman Catholic Church. The Vaterlandische Schutzbund protectors of the fatherland were national socialists. Later they started the Austrian Sturmabteilung The German Workers' Party had already been founded in Bohemia as early as 1903. It was then part of the Austro-Hungarian Empire. It supported German nationalism and anti-clericalism, but at first was not particularly anti-Semitic. This party stood mainly for making Austria and the Austrian Germans a part of Germany. In 1909 lawyer, Walter Riehl joined the party and he became leader in 1918. 
Soon after that the name was changed to the German National Socialist Workers' Party Deutsche Nationalsozialistische Arbeiterpartei, DNSAP. After the fall of the monarchy, the party split into a Czechoslovakian party and an Austrian party under Real. From 1920 onwards this Austrian party cooperated closely with the Munich-formed German Workers' Party and then the National Socialist German Workers' Party Nationalsozialistische Deutsche Arbeiterpartei, NSDAP, which Adolf Hitler led after 1921. In 1923 Reel's party had about 23,000 members and was a marginal factor in Austrian politics. In 1924 there was another split and Karl Schulz led a splinter group. The two opposed each other. In 1926 Richard Suckenworth founded the Austrian branch of Hitler's German National Socialist Party in Vienna. Around that time Benito Mussolini formed his fascist dictatorship in Italy and became an important ally of the far right. The Austrian National Socialists linked to Hitler Nazis got only 779 votes in the 1927 general election. The strongest grouping besides the Social Democrats was the Unity Coalition led by the Christian Social Party but including German nationalists and the groups of Real and Schultz. In the course of these years there were frequent serious acts of violence between the various armed factions and people were regularly killed. In the general election of 1930, the Social Democrats were the largest single party. The Christian Social Party came second but stayed in office in a coalition with smaller parties. The Austrian National Socialists linked to Hitler's NSDAP received only 3.6% of the votes and failed to enter parliament. In the following years the Nazis gained votes at the expense of the various German national groups, which also wanted unity with Germany. After 1930 Hitler's NSDAP doubled its membership every year because of the economic crisis. One of their slogans was 500,000 unemployed 400,000 Jews, simple way out, vote National Socialist. <laughs> Dictatorship, civil war and banning the National Socialists The Christian Social Party had ruled from 1932 and Chancellor Engelbert Dolfu had led them from 1932. The Social Democrats were no longer their only threat. The previous chancellor and priest Ignaz Seipel had worked towards an authoritarian state. Seipel based this on the papal encyclicals, Rerum Novarum 1891 and Quadragesimo Anno 1931. Abolition of the parliamentary system was necessary for this. A crisis in the Austrian parliament on the May 4, 1933 gave Dolfu the opportunity he wanted. Later in May 1933 the Christian Social Union was converted to the Patriotic Front. The Patriotic Front was a political organization, supposedly above partisan considerations, Roman Catholic and vehemently anti-Marxist. It purported to represent all Austrians who were true to their native land. Within a week the Austrian Communist Party was banned, and before the end of the month the Republican paramilitary organization and freethinkers organizations were banned along with numerous other groups. Nazis failed to get more than 25% of the votes in local elections in most areas. In Zwettel and Innsbruck however they got more than 40%, and they tried to lever this into a basis for agitation against the ruling Patriotic Front. Nazi supporters generated a wave of terrorism which crested in early June with four deaths and 48 people injured. In Germany Hitler became Chancellor early in 1933. The Social Democrats deleted any intention to cooperate with Germany from its party program. Nazis had fled to Bavaria after their party was banned in Austria and founded there the Austrian Legion. The Nazis there had military-style camps and military training. Nazi terrorists in Austria received financial, logistic and material support from Germany. The German government subjected Austria to systematic agitation. After the expulsion of the Bavarian Minister of Justice in May 1933 German citizens were required to pay a thousand marks to the German government before travelling to Austria. The Austrian Nazi Party was banned in June after a hand grenade attack in Krems. Nazi terrorism abated after that though five more people were killed and 52 injured by the end of the year. On February 12, 1934 there was a violent confrontation in Linz with serious consequences. Members of a paramilitary group acting to assist the police wanted to enter a building belonging to the Social Democrats or a party member's home. 
They wanted to find any weapons belonging to the Social Democrat paramilitary which had by then been banned. Violence spread to the whole country and developed into civil war. The police and their paramilitary supporters together with the army won the confrontation by the February 14. There were many arrests. Constitutional courts were abolished, trade unions and the Social Democrat Party were banned, and the death penalty was reintroduced. After political opposition had been suppressed the Austrian Republic was transformed into the Ostrophicist Standestat. The authoritarian Maverfassung May Constitution was proclaimed on May 1. Topic. Attempted Nazi coup and growing German influence From the start of 1934 there was a new wave of Nazi terrorist attacks in Austria. This time government institutions were targeted far more than individuals. In the first half of 1934, 17 people were killed and 171 injured. On July 25 the Nazis attempted a coup under the leadership of the Austrian SS. About 150 SS personnel forced their way into the Chancellor's office in Vienna. Dolfu was shot and died a few hours later from his wounds. Another group occupied the building of the Austrian National Radio and forced a statement that the government of Dolfu had fallen and Anton Rintelen was the new head of government. Anton Rintelen belonged to the Christian Social Party but is suspected of Nazi sympathy. This false report was intended to start a Nazi uprising throughout the country but it was only partially successful. There was considerable fighting in parts of Carinthia, Styria and Upper Austria and limited resistance in Salzburg. In Carinthia and Styria the fighting lasted from 27 to 30 July. Some members of the Austrian Legion tried to push out from Bavaria over the Mulviertel, a part of Upper Austria, and towards Linz. They were forced back to the frontier at Kollerschlag. On July 26 a German courier was arrested at the Kollerschlag Pass in Upper Austria. He had with him documented instructions for the revolt. This so-called Kollerschlag document demonstrated the connection of the July revolt to Bavaria clearly. The army, the gendarmerie and the police put down revolt with heavy casualties. On the government side there were 107 deaths and 500 injuries. On the rebel side there were 140 deaths and 600 injuries. Thirteen rebels were executed and 4,000 people were imprisoned without trial. Many thousand supporters of the Nazi party were arrested. Up to 4,000 fled over the border to Germany and Yugoslavia. Kurt Schuschenig became the new chancellor. In Bavaria many sections of the Austrian Legion were officially closed. In reality they were only pushed further north and renamed, Northwest Assistance. Hitler ordered troops to the Austrian border, prepared for a full-scale military assault into Austria to support the National Socialists. Fascist Italy was more closely tied to the regime in Vienna and sent troops to the Austrian border at Brenner to deter German troops from a possible invasion of Austria. Hitler was at first torn between going ahead with the invasion, or pulling off the border. Hitler realized that the German army was not prepared to take on both the Austrians and the Italian army. Hitler ordered the force to be pulled off the Austrian border. The German government stated that it had nothing to do with the revolt. Germany only admitted that it was trying to subvert the Austrian political system through trusted people. They continued to support the illegal Nazi party but sympathizers who did not belong to the party were more significant. This included among others Teres Borodijkwik, Edmund Glez Horstenau, Franz Langoth, Walther Pembauer and Arthur Say Inquart. To put Schuschenig's mind at ease, Hitler declared to the Reichstag in May 1935, Germany neither intends nor wishes to interfere in the internal affairs of Austria, to annex Austria or to conclude an Anschluss. Italy began its conquest of Abyssinia the Second Italo-Abyssinian War in October 1935. After that Mussolini was internationally isolated and strengthened his relations with Hitler. The ruling Austrian Patriotic Front lost an important ally. Despite the murder of Engelbert Dollfu, his successor Chancellor Kurt Schuschenig had to improve relations with the German government. Like his predecessor he wanted to maintain the independence of Austria. He saw Austria as the second German state and the better state as it was founded on Roman Catholicism. In July 1936 Schuschenig accepted the July Agreement with Germany. Imprisoned Nazis were released and some Nazi newspapers, which had been banned, were allowed into Austria. The Nazi party remained banned. 
Schuschnigg undertook further to allow two people whom the Nazis trusted into the government. Edmund Glez Horstenau became Minister for National Affairs and Guido Schmidt became Secretary of State in the Foreign Ministry. Arthur Say Incourt was taken into the Legislative Council of State. Germany rescinded the requirement for a payment of a thousand marks for entry into Austria. The transformation of the Austrofascist state through Nazis was furthered more in 1937 when it became possible for them to join the Patriotic Front. Throughout Austria political units were set up and some were led by Nazis. This was a legal disguise for the reorganization. The native Austrian-born Hitler wrote in Mein Kampf on the first page of the book, German Austria must return to the great German motherland, and common blood belongs in a common Reich. From 1937 it was clear to the Nazis that it would not be long before Austria was going to be part of the Third Reich. His strategy, outlined in the Hossbach Memorandum, included the annexation of Austria and the Sudetenland part of Czechoslovakia to gain Lebensraum, living space. Hitler told Goebbels in the late summer that Austria would sooner or later be taken, by force. In February 1938 Franz von Papen, the German ambassador in Vienna arranged a meeting between Hitler and Schuschnigg at Obersalzburg in Gaden in Bavaria. Hitler threatened repeatedly to invade Austria and forced Schuschnigg to implement a range of measures favorable to Austrian Nazism. The agreement of Gaden guaranteed the Austrian Nazi Party political freedom and assisted Arthur Say Incourt in becoming Home Secretary Innenminister. Schuschnigg endeavored to maintain Austrian national integrity despite steadily increasing German influence. On March 9, 1938 he announced that he wanted to hold a consultative referendum on the independence of Austria on the following Sunday. Hitler responded by mobilizing the Eighth Army for the planned invasion. Edmund Glez Horstenau who was at the time in Berlin brought Hitler's ultimatum from there and Göring reinforced it with a telephone message to Schuschnigg. The German government demanded the postponement or abandonment of the referendum. Schuschnigg conceded on the afternoon of March 11. Then Hitler demanded his resignation which happened on the same evening. <laughs> <laughs> Annexation of Austria into Nazi Germany After Schuschnigg left office, the federal president Wilhelm Michlas asked Arthur Say Incourt to form a new government as the Germans demanded. From 11 to 13 March he led the Austrian government and completed the Anschluss. On the morning of March 12 heavily armed German troops and police crossed the Austrian frontier, in total about 25,000. Large sections of the Austrian population were very pleased to see them. In Vienna, Aspern met Heinrich Himmler of the SS accompanied by many police and SS officials to take over the Austrian police. Supporters of the Austrian Nazi Party together with members of the SS and SA occupied public buildings and offices throughout Austria without a previously planned transition period. The formation of the Greater German Reich was announced from the balcony of the Council House in Linz. On the following day, March 13, 1938, the second session of the government passed the reunification with Germany law. Federal President Michlas refused to endorse it and resigned. Say Incourt was now functioning head of state. He could make his own laws and publish them. Before the evening was over, Hitler signed a law which made Austria a German province. On March 15, Hitler, who had spent the previous two days in his birth town of Braunau am Inn, made a triumphal entry into Vienna and gave a speech on Heldenplatz in front of tens of thousands of cheering people, in which he boasted of his greatest accomplishment. As leader and chancellor of the German nation and Reich, I announce to German history now the entry of my homeland into the German Reich. Ernst Kaltenbrunner from Upper Austria, sentenced to death in 1946 at the Nuremberg Trials, was promoted SS Brigadeführer and the leader of the SS Upper Section Austria. Beginning on March 12 and during the subsequent weeks 72,000 people were arrested, primarily in Vienna, among them politicians of the First Republic, intellectuals and above all Jews. Jewish institutions were shuttered. Joseph Berkel, previously Reichskommissar for the reunion of the Saar Protectorate, was appointed by Hitler to reorganize the Nazi Party in Austria and on 13 March as Reichskommissar for the reunification of Austria with the German Empire. In March 1938 the local Gauleiter of Gemunden, Upper Austria, gave a speech to the local Austrians and told them that the traitors of Austria were to be thrown into the newly opened Mauthausen concentration camp. 
Overall, 200,000 people died at the camp, roughly half of whom were killed. The anti Romaniism sentiment of Nazi Germany was implemented initially most harshly in newly annexed Austria when, between 1938 1939, the Nazis arrested around 2,000 Gypsy men whom were sent to Dachau and 1,000 Gypsy women whom were sent to Ravensbrück. In late October 1939, all Austrian Gypsies were required to register themselves. Between 1938–39 the Nazis carried out racial examinations against the Gypsy population. Until 1941 the Nazis made a distinction between «pure Gypsies» and «Gypsy Michelin». However, Nazi racial research concluded that 90% of Gypsies were of mixed ancestry. Thus, after 1942, the Nazis discriminated against the Gypsies on the same level as the Jews with a variety of discrimination laws. Plebiscite For April 10 a referendum was set for the already accomplished annexation. In those weeks leading to the referendum a kind of propaganda took place all over Austria in a way that had been never seen before. Hitler himself, Joseph Goebbels, Hermann Göring, Rudolf Hess and many other leading figures of the Nazi regime had very squeamishly scheduled appearances in public to hold speeches. The controlled press and radio had no other topic than yes to the reunion of Germany and Austria. Prominent Austrians like Cardinal Theodor Initzer, who signed a declaration of the bishops with Heil Hitler, and the Social Democrat Karl Renner promoted the approval. According to official records 99.73% voted yes in Austria and in Germany 99.08 voted for the annexation, excluded from the referendum were about 8% of the Austrian voters, about 200,000 Jews and roughly 177,000 Michelin people with both Jewish and Aryan parents and all those who had already been arrested for racial or political reasons. Antisemitism The antisemitism against Austrian Jews took place immediately after the Germans had crossed the border into Austria. The process of Aryanization began straight away. About 1,700 motor vehicles were seized from their Jewish owners between March 11 and August 10, 1938. Until May 1939, the government seized about 44,000 apartments in Jewish possession. Many were dispossessed of their shops and apartments, into which those who had robbed them moved, assisted by the saw and fanatics. Jews were forced to put on their best clothes and, on their hands and knees with brushes, to clean the sidewalks of anti anschluss slogans. <laughs> <laughs> Concentration camps and euthanasia The largest concentration camp in Austria was the mauthausen gusen complex, with more than 50 subcamps, among them the Eben C concentration camp, KZ, Nebenlager Bretstein, Stair Munich Holes subcamp and AFA work. Euthanasia was practiced in Hartheim Castle near Linz, where the killing program Action T4 took place, and in Am Spiegelgren Clinic in Vienna, where more than 700 handicapped children were murdered. Prominent Austrians in the Nazi regime The following Austrians were among those playing an active part in the Nazi regime Adolf Hitler was German Chancellor from 1933 to 1945 and Führer leader from August 2, 1934 to April 30, 1945. Ernst Kaltenbrunner replaced Heydrich in January 1943 as leader of Reichsischerheitschauptamt RSHA. Arthur Say Inquart organized or covered several Nazi crimes in the Netherlands. Odilo Globochnik was SS and police leader from 1939 in Poland where he supervised the building of the four Nazi extermination camps in Belzec, Sobibor, Treblinka and Majdanek. He was one of the main people responsible for murdering about two millions of Polish Jews. Action Reinhardt Franz Joseph Huber, appointed chief of the Sicherheitspolizei Security Police, SIPO and Gestapo for Vienna, the Lower Danube and Upper Danube regions. August Eigruber, Gauleiter of Upper Austria. Alexander Lohr, commander of Luftflotte 4, carried out the bombing of Belgrade in April 1941. 
Wolfgang Abel, professor of racial biology at the University of Berlin, was involved in compulsory sterilization of so-called Rhineland bastards. During the war, he carried out racial analyses on 7,000 Soviet prisoners of war on behalf of the high command of the army. Heinrich Gross wrote expertises about unworthy lives and carried out deadly experiments at Amspiegelgrund with handicapped children. Karl Silberbauer arrested Anne Frank in 1944. The Austrian Gauleiters Hugo Jury, Franz Hofer and Friedrich Rainer also participated in Nazi crimes. Austrians in exile From March to November 1938, 130,000 people managed to escape legally or illegally from Austria. Among the most famous emigrating artists, there were the composers Arnold Schoenberg and Robert Stolz, the filmmakers Leon Askin, Fritz Lang, Joseph von Sternberg, Billy Wilder, Max Reinhardt, the actors Karl Farkas and Gerhard Brauner, and the writers Hermann Brach, Robert Musel, Anton Kuh, and Franz Werfel. Friedrich Torberg, who witnessed the German invasion, and Sluz, in Prague, did not return to Vienna. Eric Fried flew with his mother to London after his father had been killed by the Gestapo in May 1938 during an interrogation. Stefan Zweig escaped via London, New York, Argentina and Paraguay to Brazil where he committed suicide in February 1942, together with his wife Charlotte Altman. 1936 Nobel laureate in medicine Otto Lowy had to pay his prize money back before emigrating. Additional scientists going into exile were Sigmund Freud, Erwin Schrödinger, Kurt Gödel, Martin Buber, Karl Popper and Lise Meitner. Bruno Kreisky, who had to leave the country for political reasons and because of his Jewish origin, emigrated to Sweden. After his comeback, he served as Austrian Chancellor from 1970 to 1983. <laughs> Aftermath In 1984 in Lackenbach, almost 40 years after the end of war a memorial for the Ziguner Anhel Teliger Romani was unveiled. A memorial in Kometen has not yet been started. Prior to the war, 200 Romani people lived in Kometen. They were deported in 1941, only five of them came back in 1945. In mid-2004, the question of how to celebrate the 60th anniversary of the death of Robert Bernardes, who was shot on August 8, 1944 after being involved in the July 20 plot against Hitler, led to a political conflict. Politicians of the opposition Spo, Grun, as well as some celebrities suggested renaming a barracks as Robert Bernardes' Cassern, which was turned down by the governing OVP and FPO. The defense minister Gunther Platter OVP finally decided to build a memorial in the yard of the Toerich Barrack in Enns. The green politician Terezija Stoizitz pointed out that a barracks was named after Austrian Sergeant Anton Schmidt in Germany on 8 May 2004. Schmidt was sentenced to death by a Wehrmacht court-martial and was shot on 13 April 1942, after he saved the lives of a hundred Jews in the Vilnius ghetto. In the first years after the war, many memorials were built in several places, commemorating the dead soldiers of World War II who allegedly fought for their country. For the victims of the Nazi regime, memorials have only been built at a much later time. Since 1992, there is the possibility of doing Zivildienst alternative national service in the Austrian Holocaust Memorial Service. Approximately 15 people are deployed in the archive of the concentration camp Memorial Mauthausen and alternatively in the camp itself. On 1 September 1992, the first Austrian Holocaust Memorial serviceman started working in the Auschwitz-Birkenau State Museum. Andreas Maislinger has taken over the idea from the Action Reconciliation Service for Peace. Annually approximately 30 civil servants are sent to Holocaust memorials and connected institutions in Europe, Israel, USA, South America and China by the Holocaust Memorial Service. The biggest Austrian memorial for the remembrance of National Socialist crimes is the mauthausen gusen concentration camp. Part of the Contemporary History Museum Ebensee, it emerged through a private initiative in 2001 and remembers victims of the Ebensee concentration camp. See also July Putsch Austrian Civil War